Today, we're diving deep into a case that has captured the attention of many, the lives of Dr. Sam Shepard and Marilyn Reese. These names have been at the center of a mystery that has remained unsolved for years, with events that took place on July 4, 1954, forever altering their lives and leaving a lasting impact on American legal history. In this video, we'll unravel the details surrounding the couple, the tragedy that struck, and the twists that followed. Stay with us as we explore the events, the legal battles, and the mystery behind it all this is a story of love, loss, and a fight for justice. Let's begin. The quaint town of Bay Village, Ohio stood as a symbol of peaceful, prosperous America in 1954. Behind the manicured lawns and white picket fences, secrets simmered. None more baffling than the brutal murder of Marilyn Reese Shepard. Her husband, Dr. Samuel Shepard, became the prime suspect. The case captivated the nation, forever changing how we view justice. Seven decades later, the question remains, who killed Marilyn Shepard? Was it her husband, or did a shadowy figure slip away in the night? Dr. Samuel Shepard had it all good looks, a thriving osteopathic practice, and a picture-perfect family. His wife, Marilyn, was the epitome of 1950s domesticity beautiful, devoted, and a loving mother to their young son, Chip. The Shepherds were the envy of their community, their lives seemingly plucked from the pages of a magazine, but behind the facade of happiness, cracks began to show. Whispers of marital discord and Sam's alleged infidelity circulated through the town's rumor mill. The pressures of Sam's demanding career and their growing family seemed to strain their once storybook marriage. Still, no one could have predicted the horrific events that would unfold on the night of July 4th, 1954. The Shepherds hosted a lively party at their lakefront home, the sounds of laughter and conversation spilling out into the summer night. Guests came and went, enjoying the holiday festivities. Among them were neighbors, friends, and Sam's brother, Stephen, with his wife. It was a night like any other, full of promise and warmth. Little did they know, darkness lurked just around the corner, waiting to shatter their idyllic world. As fireworks lit up the sky, a sense of unease settled over the shepherd home. The party dwindled, guests said their goodbyes, and an unsettling silence descended upon the house. Sam, dozing on the living room couch, was jolted awake by Marilyn's cries. He stumbled up the stairs towards their bedroom, only to be knocked unconscious by a shadowy figure. Coming to, Sam found himself in a haze of confusion and terror. His beloved Marilyn lay lifeless on the bedroom floor, her body brutally beaten. Panic surged through him as he staggered through the house, desperately searching for an intruder, for answers. He raced downstairs, frantically calling out for his son, Chip, who was sleeping peacefully in his room, oblivious to the horror that had unfolded. Driven by a primal instinct to protect his son, Sam carried Chip outside to the safety of their backyard. He laid him down on the grass, the cool night air, a stark contrast to the blood-soaked sheets upstairs. Fear propelled him back into the house, back to the nightmare he couldn't escape. He called for help, his voice raw with terror, but it was too late. Marilyn was gone, and he was alone in a house of horrors. The police arrived to find a scene of unimaginable brutality. Marilyn's lifeless body lay in a pool of blood, her injuries a testament to the savagery of the attack. The house, though in disarray, lacked any signs of forced entry. Suspicion immediately fell upon Sam, his account of the night's events muddled and inconsistent. Sam's story seemed almost too fantastical to be true. He claimed to have fought with a bushy-haired intruder, a description that fueled public imagination but offered little concrete evidence. His injuries, though present, were deemed relatively minor compared to the brutality inflicted upon Marilyn. The lack of a murder weapon and the seemingly staged nature of the crime scene further fueled suspicion towards the grieving husband. The media, sensing a sensational story, descended upon the small town, turning the tragedy into a public spectacle. Headlines screamed Sam's guilt, painting him as a cold-blooded killer driven by jealousy and deceit. The public 
bombarded with images of Sam's seemingly emotionless demeanor and fueled by the media's insatiable appetite for scandal, readily accepted his guilt. The doctor, once a pillar of the community, became the villain in a story that seemed ripped from the pages of a pulp novel. Section 5. In the Court of Public Opinion The trial of Dr. Samuel Shepard was a media frenzy, a spectacle that captivated the nation. Cameras and microphones crowded the courtroom, capturing every twist and turn of the proceedings. The prosecution painted Sam as a philandering husband, driven to murder by his wife's pregnancy and his own infidelity. They argued that he had staged the crime scene, planting evidence to support his story of an intruder. The defense, however, argued that the police had mishandled the investigation, focusing solely on Sam while ignoring other potential suspects. They pointed to the lack of concrete physical evidence linking Sam to the crime and the complete absence of a motive. Sam, they argued, loved his wife and had no reason to harm her. The jury, bombarded by months of sensationalized media coverage and the prosecution's relentless portrayal of Sam as a monster, found it difficult to see past the headlines. The trial, rather than a search for truth, had become a public referendum on Sam's character. The weight of public opinion, heavily influenced by the media's portrayal of events, hung over the courtroom like a shroud. Section 6. A verdict and its aftermath. After weeks of testimony and intense deliberation, the jury reached a verdict. Guilty. Sam Shepard, the once respected doctor, was convicted of second-degree murder and sentenced to life in prison. The news sent shockwaves throughout the country, solidifying his image as the monster the media had created. Despite the verdict, doubts lingered. Sam maintained his innocence, clinging to the hope that the truth would eventually come to light. His family, devastated by Marilyn's loss and Sam's conviction, never gave up on him. They believed in his innocence their faith fueled by the inconsistencies that plagued the case. Years turned into decades, and Sam remained behind bars, his life forever altered by the events of that fateful night. The case faded from public memory, but for those who knew Sam and believed in his innocence, the fight for justice had just begun. The verdict they knew was not the end of the story. It was merely the beginning of a long and arduous journey to uncover the truth a journey that would span generations. Section 7 Seeds of Doubt. The years following Sam's conviction saw a growing unease surrounding the case. Legal experts and journalists began to scrutinize the trial, uncovering troubling irregularities in the police investigation and the prosecution's conduct. The media, once complicit in Sam's downfall, began to question the narrative they had helped create. One of the most vocal critics was F. Lee Bailey, a renowned attorney known for his tenacity and courtroom prowess. Bailey, convinced of Sam's innocence, took on the case, determined to expose the flaws in the original trial. He argued that the prosecution had withheld crucial evidence and that the media circus surrounding the case had prejudiced the jury, denying Sam a fair trial. Bailey's efforts culminated in a landmark Supreme Court decision in 1966. The court, recognizing the detrimental effect of pre-trial publicity on Sam's right to a fair trial, overturned his conviction, granting him a retrial. The decision sent shockwaves through the legal system, highlighting the crucial role of a free and impartial press in ensuring justice. Section 8, The Science of Justice. Sam's retrial in 1966 offered a glimmer of hope, a chance to present new evidence and challenge the prosecution's case. Forensic science, still in its infancy during the original trial, had advanced significantly. Bailey, armed with new forensic analysis of the crime scene, presented a compelling argument that cast doubt on Sam's guilt. The new evidence pointed to the possibility of a left-handed assailant contradicting witness testimonies that described the bushy-haired intruder as right-handed. Blood spatter analysis, not available during the first trial, suggested a struggle that didn't align with the prosecution's theory of the crime. The defense, for the first time, presented a viable alternative suspect, Richard Ebeling, a window washer who had worked at the Shepherd home and had a history of violence. The prosecution, their case weakened by the passage of time and the scrutiny of the retrial, struggled to maintain their narrative of Sam as a cold-blooded killer. 
The evidence, once damning, now appeared circumstantial, open to interpretation. The media, no longer the sensationalized force it once was, approached the retrial with a newfound sense of responsibility, reporting on the proceedings with a measured tone. Section 9, The Shadow of Reasonable Doubt. After a tense retrial, the jury acquitted Sam Shepard. He walked out of the courtroom a free man, but the shadow of suspicion continued to linger. The retrial, while clearing his name, did not definitively answer the question of who killed Marilyn Shepard. The case, now shrouded in even more mystery, continued to fascinate and intrigue. Theories abounded, ranging from jealous lovers to disgruntled patients to a possible connection to organized crime. Books, documentaries, and television shows explored every angle of the case, each offering its own interpretation of events. Despite the passage of time, Marilyn's murder remained unsolved. Sam Shepard, forever linked to the crime that consumed his life, died in 1970. His name cleared, but his life forever marked by the tragedy. The quest for truth, however, continued. Driven by his family's unwavering belief in his innocence and a desire to bring Marilyn's true killer to justice, Section 10, An Enduring Mystery. The case of Dr. Samuel Shepard and Marilyn Reese Shepard remains one of the most enduring mysteries in American history. It serves as a stark reminder of the power of the media, the fallibility of eyewitness accounts, and the importance of due process. The case, forever etched in the annals of true crime, continues to be debated and analyzed, its lessons relevant even today. In the decades since Marilyn's murder, advancements in DNA technology have brought renewed hope for a resolution. Efforts to test remaining evidence have been met with both hope and frustration as forensic technology struggles to extract viable DNA profiles from the decades-old samples. The quest for justice, however, continues, fueled by a belief that the truth, no matter how elusive, can be found. The case of Sam and Marilyn Shepard is a story that transcends time. It's a story about love and loss, betrayal and redemption, and the relentless pursuit of justice. It's a story that reminds us that the truth is often elusive, buried beneath layers of speculation and doubt, but it's also a story that gives us hope, hope that even in the darkest of times, the light of truth can prevail. The question remains, will we ever know for sure who killed Marilyn Shepard? Only time will tell.